This week, there's been massive news in the free and open source gaming world. We'll talk about it. Plus, new details will emerge about the Orange Pi Neo and a new gaming laptop from Manjaro. We'll look into it. Plus, Star Wars Battlefront, and this time it has nothing to do with Electronic Arts. All this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck and Linux news time. So this week, Nintendo had a Direct, which they often do, and Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection was announced. It comes out March 14th, and it's Steam Deck verified. And I say this lovingly, of course it is. I mean, it's developed and published by Aspire. They've got a long history of publishing games for Linux and Mac OS. And this collection includes Star Wars Battlefront and Star Wars Battlefront 2, alongside bonus content for both games, including Jabba's Palace, Bespin, and Yavin 4 multiplayer maps. And we're not talking about the DICE-led, EA-published Star Wars Battlefront. No, 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 no. We're not erasing history here. We're talking about the 2004-2005 titles. Now, I played the heck out of these games. The Battlefront games, when I was a kid, uh, they were kind of the ultimate game for me. And I'm really excited to play this on my Steam Deck, honestly. Uh, especially since EA is not involved, as far as I can tell. And remember, the original games were published by Pandemic Studios and published by LucasArts, and EA lost the exclusive Star Wars license a few years ago. So at this point, it's all Aspire, at least with these games. Now, one other exciting feature of this game is that it has split-screen multiplayer. And I'm a sucker for any game with local multiplayer support, since that's really the only fun way to play games with a friend in my book. And it even supports Steam's remote play together, which is pretty neat. Now, I've added this to my wish list and I'm really excited to play this classic on my Steam Deck. Actually, both of these classics. Okay, SanDisk's 1.5 terabyte micro SD card is on sale right now. It's 20% off. Folks have tested it and they've reported that it works great on the Steam Deck and other Linux powered machines. I know that I have a few Linux machines around here that uh, have SD card ports and uh, the SD card works so well uh, that I took the SD card out of my Steam Deck put it in one of these other mini PCs, and all of my games were just there. You can check out my review of the B-Link SEI 12 up here uh, where I did just that in the video. And man, I tell you what, it saved me a lot of time. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I have fiber optic internet to the home. Uh, it's really fast. Games download super fast through Steam, but just being able to take the SD card out and plug it into another uh, SteamOS-ish powered device and uh, having all your games just be there without having to download them again, that is such a game changer for my review process uh, for hardware and I absolutely love it. So having uh, an additional 500 gigabytes of storage on an SD card like this is gonna be an absolute game changer. You can use my link below to pick up one of these for yourself. Do note that it is a affiliate link. It comes at no additional cost to you and it helps support the show. So thanks. So the Steam Deck Academy has launched over on Rock Paper Shotgun. When I first saw the headline, I was like, oh, this should be cool. It's a page that acts as a repository of all of RPS's institutional knowledge about the Steam Deck. I was a little underwhelmed by it because it's basically just a blog post with links, but it's still pretty cool. Now they've got guides on how to use Lutris or Battle.net or PC Game Pass on Steam Deck, and they have reviews and accessories as well. They also have listicles about the Steam Deck, which is pretty cool. And it's really nice to see mainstream coverage of the deck, and I'd just love to see more of it. But if you're a Steam Deck fan and you're watching this channel, what would you like to see me talk about more here on the show? Sound off in the comments below. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button and get subscribed? It's the best way to tell the YouTube algorithm you wanna see more videos just like this. But if you're tired of being told what to watch by an uncaring, unfeeling, unthinking engagement algorithm, then you can check out my new streaming site, subscribeto.me. It's a website dedicated to techie, nerdy content. It's free and open source, and it's part of the Fediverse. So you can subscribe to my channel through your existing your Mastodon, PixelFed, or PeerTube account. And you can even use your favorite podcast app or RSS reader to subscribe. The choice is all yours. I've also got the first and second episodes of my new D&D &D campaign over there. There'll be a link in the description. Now, none of this would be possible without my patrons, so thank you guys. You can pledge your support for free and independent media with the support links below. All right, now back to it. The IGN FanFest bundle is underway over on the Humble Store. $12 net you seven games, and these are some excellent titles. First, we have A Little to the Left, which is a game about stacking, sorting, and organizing to solve puzzles. 
Then there's Loop Hero, an infinite loop of gameplay where you place enemies, buildings, and terrain along your hero's journey. And then there's Shantae and the Seven Sirens, a new adventure in the Shantae franchise. You can use my affiliate link below to help support this show, pick up the FanFest bundle for yourself, and help support charity. A few weeks ago, we talked about the Orange Pie Neo, a gaming handheld from Manjaro and Orange Pie that's going to ship with the new immutable Manjaro Gaming Edition distribution. Now, interestingly, Manjaro was the only one to talk about this device back at Fostum this year, but now we have a little bit more information. First, Manjaro project lead Philip Mueller says that they've been working on this handheld since May of 2023. So this is not some fly-by-night operation here. Manjaro Gaming Edition is going to ship with a specially patched version of GameScope, which is Valve's desktop environment, for lack of a better term, for big picture mode. But it also comes with Handy Geeks, or GCCs, a, a handheld game controller mapping utility. It also has Open Gamepad UI, which is an open source big picture mode-like front end for managing your games, and HHD, or Handheld Daemon, which is a utility to fully expose controller emulation, gyros, paddles, LEDs, and a quick access menu across Steam, Yuzu, Dolphin, and other applications. But not everything's ready yet. Manjaro's still working on completing a few things to get ready for the hardware release, namely the RGB controls, TDP management and open gamepad UI, controller support, fan curves and battery optimizations, audio equalizer improvements, and sleep and standby needs work on the firmware end. Now they say in their post that they're shooting for a quarter two 2024 release date and that they don't have the exact prices for the device. However, they're expecting the device to fall on the lower end of the Steam Deck's pricing. I have to say Manjaro is my absolute favorite operating system. And if they can pull off everything that they're aiming for with Manjaro Gaming Edition, I won't even think twice about installing it on my Steam Deck. And speaking of gaming on Manjaro, the Manjaro team has partnered with Slimbook to create the Slimbook Hero. This is a new gaming laptop that ships with their desktop operating system. It comes with an Intel Core i7-13620H with 10 cores and 16 threads at 4.9 gigahertz. It has an eight gigabyte RTX 4060, 5,200 megahertz DDR5 RAM, two two terabyte NVMe drives, a 15.6 inch 1440p display at 165 hertz, quote, exceptional sound blaster experience because we are all in need of a 32 bit AWE right now and a 14 day trial for Crossover 24. Crossover being the paid for wine experience. Now I've got to say that this looks like a decent package. The pricing starts at 1399 euros and for what you get, I'd say that it makes sense. Now that's 1399 euros, including European taxes. So if you want to pick these up and you live outside the Eurozone, you're going to need to talk to your customs uh, as you're going to have to pay more to import this. But if you're in Europe, this really does seem like it's a cool deal. All right, let's talk about Steam Audio. It's Valve's in-house immersive audio solution. It's a game development tool that accurately simulates spatial audio, sound occlusion, and head-related transfer functions. Quote, with Steam Audio, sound appears to flow and wrap its way around mazes and corridors accurately and adapts to changes in geometry and materials on the fly. It's pretty great. That quote is attributed to Emily Ridgway, a totally unbiased Valve employee. <laughs> I like the idea that they stuck a mic in her face and was like, tell us about Steam Audio, and she has nothing to do with the Steam Audio team. Anyway, why am I talking about Steam Audio? Well, in a trend that I hope continues, Valve have released Steam Audio as an open source project. And seeing as this channel is just as much about the Steam Deck as it is free software, I thought, hell yeah, I'm gonna talk about this. So not only does it include support for PC, Mac OS and Linux, of course, but it also includes Android support. And they have integrations for Unity Engine, for Unreal Engine 4, FMOD Studio, as well as having a C API. This is incredible and it has potential to upset the industry. I mean, a dynamic, powerful, and open source audio engine that's not only fit for traditional flat screen games, but also high-end AAA VR experiences? Yes, please. Now, if only Godot would support this, that would be even more awesome. Steam Audio is released under the permissive Apache license, and I think that that's a good move as a copyleft license wouldn't be suitable for adoption by proprietary video game development studios. So why are they open sourcing it? Well, there's a couple reasons, mostly because right now it's only built to build support Valve's games, but they want it to become a full-fledged audio engine. So that's one reason, and having other companies work on open source code and contributing back to it is a great way to make this a more robust product. 
but it's also because it's the right thing to do. And I love seeing how committed Valve is to open source software. The fact that Manjaro has taken Gamescope, which is Valve's SteamOS desktop environment and used it in their operating system, as well as in Chimera and Bazite and all the other uh, gaming distros that use it now, Valve obviously is dedicated to the idea of open source software, and it's one of the many reasons that I am a huge enthusiast of the work that they're doing. End of rant right there. <laughs> I think that's all the news that I wanted to touch on this week. Uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Make sure that you feed the fickle whims of YouTube's depraved algorithmic deity and leave a comment below. Or you can also use your Mastodon account to leave a comment on this video over on Subscribe to Me. Uh, thank you to my patrons for their continued support for the work that I'm doing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.